Browns and Chiefs getting together in Kansas City, a battle of uh, two of the worst teams in the NFL. Jason Horowitz, NFL.com's Pat hey, Irwin. Glad to be with you on the NFL Preview Show presented by Tyson. Any Tizers? And if that doesn't get you excited to watch the game, well, I would understand why. Yes, two bad teams facing off. How could that be exciting? December 20th, 2009. The Browns versus the Chiefs. Brady Quinn had one heck of a game. 66 passing yards, zero touchdowns, and a whopping two interceptions. Yet, the Browns scored 41 points. So, how did they put up these points? Well, Josh Cribbs was part of it. As one of the few bright spots on the Browns roster, he returned two kickoffs for touchdowns, setting an NFL record along the way for the most kickoff return touchdowns in a season. It was a pretty historic moment, and pretty crazy to think that he returned two in the same game. It was something that had only been done nine other times in the history of the NFL. And this performance wasn't even close to the craziest thing that happened that day. Now that Jamal Lewis can no longer play, the Browns don't have many options at running back. So by default, we're getting a good, long look at Jerome Harrison. Meet Jerome Harrison, not James Harrison. The freak of nature linebacker from Pittsburgh who returned that interception in the Super Bowl. No, I'm talking about the 5'9", 205-pound running back. A former fifth-round pick in 2006, Jerome Harrison was a backup for most of his tenure in the NFL. He hardly even played in his first three seasons. He didn't even have a touchdown until his third year. And he averaged less than four carries a game. And he never had a thousand-yard season. And now he is finally being handed the reins in week 15 of the 2009 season. And he is about to reach a feat that no Browns player, not even the legendary Jim Brown, had ever done. Let me just show you the all-time leaderboard for rushing yards in a game. Jerome Harrison completely carved the Chiefs all day long, ending the game with three touchdowns. Oh, and by the way, his last one came late in the fourth and ended up being the game-winning touchdown. The dude was 11 yards away from being the all-time single-game rusher in the history of the NFL. And oddly enough, Jamal Lewis, one of the two players ahead of him on this list, was actually on the Browns team. He also set the former record against the Browns when he played for the Ravens, but now later in his career, he literally was the Browns' starting running back, while Harrison was the backup. Lewis got hurt in week 12, ultimately giving Harrison the opportunity for this to happen. Before this unbelievable performance, in the game before this, Harrison had seven carries for nine yards. To be fair, he did finish the season strong with two more 100-yard games, finishing the year at 862 rushing yards. After the 2009 season, he'd only have one more rushing touchdown and one more 100-yard game for the rest of his career. This incredible game equated for over 33% of his total yards on the season and 60% of his rushing touchdowns. That 286 yards was 17% of his career rushing yards. To put that into perspective, Emmitt Smith would have to rush for 3,122 yards in a game to achieve 17% of his career total. If Harrison replicated this performance just six times, it would surpass his amount of rushing yards in his career. In a six-year, 62-game career, Jerome Harrison had 1,681 yards and seven touchdowns, which if you look just straight at those numbers, you would say that's a pretty solid single season stat line. Actually, six of the 10 guys on the all-time single game rushing list had at least a single season with that many yards, and the other ones had a season with at least 1,400. Of the top 50 performances on that list, only three players didn't reach 1,000 yards in a season. Tommy Wilson, a fullback who played in the 50s, Bo Jackson, who played baseball during his career, so it limited his games in the NFL, and lastly, Jerome Harrison.
We'll talk about real big. That could be used in reference to the season that you had, especially the last <laughs> part of it. I mean, looking forward, man. I mean, the, the Cleveland, the fans, they want you to carry that through through this year. Yeah, you know, that's the goal, to pick up where I left off. You know, had a good off-season workout, still training down in Florida. And uh, it's going good. I'm probably as strong as I ever been, best shape I ever been. Harrison would battle injuries and struggle to get on the field for two seasons, before ultimately failing a physical, later to find out that he had a brain tumor. And during surgery to remove the tumor, there were further complications that temporarily paralyzed Harrison. And to see him like that was just unreal. He was declared a quadriplegic. He had paralyzed vocal cords. He was trached and had a feeding tube. After such promise, Jerome Harrison's life had completely flipped upside down. But she didn't say one word. I didn't die. <laughs> Jerome Harrison has battled back, and he's gained back quite a bit of function that he had lost. I could see it in his face, and he was ready to go. He was ready to go. Oh, it was on. It was on. He had just pure determination. He was not going to let this get him down. You should actually watch the full video on the whole process. It's just overall incredible and definitely inspiring. As far as his NFL career in six seasons, yeah, maybe he didn't have the most decorated and illustrious career, not even close, but he did something special that December day, something that 99% of NFL players will never achieve. Runs left, and he's inside the 40, yes. and 238, so he's past the great Jim Brown. Single game rushing. How about that?